Good afternoon. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. Welcome to Annunciation Parish. Our celebrant for today's Mass is Father Steve. Before we begin our celebration, there are a few announcements. The Giving Tree fundraiser continues this weekend. The Giving Tree is the major fundraiser for the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Donations are used to purchase gift cards for children and food baskets for families. Other funds collected will be used throughout the year to support the ongoing needs of the poor we serve. Committee members will be at the back of the church after each Mass handing out Giving Tree envelopes. Simply return the envelope with your donation inside, either in the collection basket or to the parish office. Thank you for your generosity. Santa's workshop will be held this Sunday at 8 a.m. in Holy Rosary Hall. Breakfast will be available in the lower hall with Santa's workshop in the upper hall with gifts available for all ages. This Tuesday, December 7th at 6.30 p.m., we will be hosting a special teaching and exposition of sacred relics. This Vatican-based exhibit has traveled all around the country and to other parts of the world. More details are in the bulletin and on the website. This Wednesday is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, a holy day of obligation. Masses will be at 7.30 a.m. at Holy Spirit, 9 a.m. at Holy Rosary, and 7 p.m. at Holy Rosary. Next Sunday, December 12th, we will have a celebration of Our Lady of Guadalupe. A listing of events is in the bulletin and on the website. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good afternoon. Amen. Today we hear of a voice crying out in the wilderness, a voice that calls to us and that we have to really pay attention to, to be able to hear. And so, as we prepare for this Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord's forgiveness and mercy. <coughs> I confess to Almighty God and to you and my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now, to mark our progression on our Advent journey, we light the next candle in our Advent wreath. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrap in the cloak of justice from God. Bear on your head the mitre that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named by God forever the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up, Jerusalem, stand upon the heights. Look to the east and see your children gathered from the east and the west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you, but God will bring them back to you, born aloft, in glory as on royal thrones. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low, and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground, that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forests and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory, with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to the Lord. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of the region of Eteria and Triconitis, and Lysinius was tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill made low, the winding roads made straight, the rough ways made smooth. And you may say, so when's that going to happen? How can we, as we heard today, take off our robe of mourning and misery, put on the splendor of the glory of God forever? The readings this week are very hopeful. Hopeful that, as St. Paul says, our love may be ever more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value so that you may be pure and blameless. But in order to experience the dropping of barriers to peace, in order to experience a loss of mourning and misery, in order to increase in knowledge and perception, 
we must first listen. Listen. Listening is what the quiet of Advent calls us to do. Yet at this time of year, there's a lot of noise. Noise of people rushing around in stores and parties, noises of political commentary played at a shrill volume all the time, the noise of advertisers screaming at you to buy their products. We often listen to what these voices say. We can be attracted to them, held to them, distracted by them, drawn to them. We are attentive to ideologies. We hear reasons to distrust other groups. We wonder, we wonder, as it explained to us how your loved ones will love you even more if you buy them certain things. Bah humbug. If I can bar borrow a line from a Christmas classic, bah humbug to all that. God calls us to a quiet time of this year, not to a lot of noise. God calls us to let the sounds out there of division and hatred, fear, quarreling, marketing, all of this fade into the background. We wonder if this is possible. It is possible. It's possible for us to pay attention to other, more quiet voices. Have you ever lost a child in a store? Or have you ever been the child who got lost in the store? I think one of it, we've either been on one side or the other of that one. I have. There can be a lot of noise going on. There can be a lot of voices blasting Christmas carols over the sound system. But somehow, somehow you can turn your ear to hear the voice of that one person that you've lost. We can tune other things out and we can listen for that one voice. And when we hear it, we perk up. We recognize it. All of the noises become a background to the voice of the lost child, to the voice that the child is trying to hear their parent calling to them. God's voice also comes out to us mixed in all these other voices, all the other noises in life. Like the voice of John the Baptist we heard calling out from the desert, God is calling out to us. Calling out from someplace far away. Just like the child who is so focused on shiny and exciting things in the store that they do not even know that they got lost. The same is with us. Our distraction amid all the other sights and sounds of the world, we can become lost and not even know it. Not even realize that we've become lost. It's only when that child hears the parent's voice that they somehow realize they've gotten themselves lost. They become aware, they call out back to the parent so that they can be found. And this is the call and response that Jesus is looking for and that he puts out to us at Advent. A voice calls out to us to wake up, to wake up to the fact that we are lost. And then that voice guides us back to safety, guides us back to a loving embrace. So how do we hear this voice? How do we hear that voice that, like I said, is streaming through all this other noise around us? Well, first, we have to get ourselves into a mindset to hear. We have to desire to hear God. We have to pray to God to let us hear. We have to recognize that we may be more lost than we think we are. We have to accept that we may be separated from God. And that's kind of the, the repentance John is talking about, right? That repentance that I've let myself become separated from God and I reach out for forgiveness. If dropping the pride, the barriers of pride and our own self-assurance, then we can say, Lord, speak to me. Lord, make me attentive to what you are saying. Let me hear it. Open my ears so that I can hear. 
this attitude of listening is not only listening to the words, but listening in the depth of your heart, searching for the deeper personal meanings that God is trying to say to you, to each person. What is God speaking? The second thing we would need to do after having this attitude, this openness to recognize we need to hear and to listen, is to put ourselves in places, in situations, to be able to hear God. We can begin by carving out spaces for silence for the Lord. And this can be while we're at Mass. This can be another time we take to come into church or quiet place. Ten minutes of silence that we set off in some kind of specific place, a place, a quiet place for ourselves. Putting aside also time to study spiritual things. It's a lot of good books, a lot of good reading material we can just get to reflect on. And in the silence, engage the scriptures. Fully listen to the words when you're at Mass of the homily and the prayers of the Mass. Listen. And you know, when you have those kind of quieter times, it's really a tendency, I think, for all of us, for me too, to let your mind wander onto what do I have to do, what needs to happen. It's just say, I'm at church now, I'm in Mass, I'm just going to let this time be a time where I let the other stuff go. And I just focus myself on what God might be saying to me in this Mass. Take time to reflect on what you're reading, what you hear in Scripture. Also reflect on what other people may have said to you. Consider what the Lord may be trying to communicate to you. And then the final step is to put that into practice. To take what you've heard in that openness and then to put it into practice. To trust that the Lord would not lead you astray. That if you do this, it will bring you to these things that our hopeful readings tonight are pointing out to us. Now, one last thing. It's important to remember that not everything that we think we hear is actually God speaking. In the store, with a lost child, the parent may see the back of a head of a child and think it's theirs, and they go over and it's some other kid. The child could go to where they think the parent is going to want them to go, and the parent's not there. All right? It's possible to not hear it right. And we have to, quoting St. Paul's, reading from St. Paul again today, discern what is a virtue, a value of it. By learning the teaching of the church that Jesus left and has developed to guide us, adding together the various messages from various different sources we encounter, seeking the help or the, the counsel of a spiritual advisor can help you clarify. These are important ways. God helps us to discern between the voice of Jesus, the voice of the deceiver who's trying to drag us away, and just our own crazy voices that we got going on inside ourselves that come from all different places. But you can't discern if you have nothing to wrestle with in discernment. And you'll have nothing to wrestle with if you do not listen. This listening is the beginning step to a dialogue with Jesus, a dialogue where he can show us the path to those hopeful things that we heard about today. Let us now together profess our faith. I believe in the one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, from God from God, begotten not made, consubstantial of God, through all things were made, for us and for our salvation. 
now turning ourselves to the Lord who seeks to reach out to us, we make an approach offering these prayers. That the church embrace new challenges with the same joy and strength as those retired religious who have prepared the way of the Lord for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That every nation prepare now for the day of Christ by working for peace and good of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the prophets and witnesses to Christ in our time proclaim him without fear. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those in danger of being without heat or shelter during this time of year, when the weather grows colder, we may have a warm place to call home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are estranged from their families forgive one another and be reconciled. We pray through the, to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community go forth and hasten the coming of the Lord through love and charity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead will hear the voice of God's Son, inviting them to enter his kingdom, especially Doris Kocher, Geneva Clarence, and Jean-Paul Le Legere, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear us as we turn to you. Allow us to receive your gifts and your many messages and words to us. We ask all these things through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord says, sacrifice for your hands, for the grace of the Lord Jesus' name, Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. And when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially for Doris Kocher, and for Geneva, Clarence, and Jean-Paul Legend, and for all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Amen. of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of His only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessings. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain forever. Amen. Let us go in peace. This Mass is ended. Amen. Open the 